Hi again, it's Peter, GM0EUL. Um, this is the third of these videos about um, refurbishing a Palm Mini Paddle. And in this one, I'm going to show you how to convert um, a Palm Mini Paddle from the original three pin Molex connector, which a lot of people don't like and which can be quite fragile, uh, into a far more common 3.5 millimeter or 1 8 inch stereo jack socket um, which the majority of keys have it's a far more common fitting it's designed for more use cycles um, so it can be a lot more robust uh, let me show you the key and just nip you through what i've done so far to get to this stage um, have a look at the other two videos it's described in more detail but basically i have released it from its case um, removed the Molex connector and that's held in place as you know by um, it's an interference fit in so it pushes in but it's also stabilized by what appears to be a drop of super glue so I, I take hold of it just you rock it and pull it twist it just to try and break the glue seal then it pulls off easily um, and you can release the clips which are inside these slots and it pulls away um, from the wires so on this one i have snipped off the molex um, spring clips immediately behind the crimps um, and i have then actually removed the black wire already from where it solders to the paddle and i'm going to do the same with the red wire because it's it's, it's better to pull these wires right out than to try and solder to them underneath um, so that's very easy I've already removed the black wire and to remove the red wire um, use a, a soldering iron this is set to 360 centigrade which is my sort of standard temperature uh, and this is quite a light thing with not much um, sort of heat sink capability so it doesn't need much more heat than that uh, you can see how that is is soldered. This this looks like a piece of um, printed circuit board material, which the Palm Mini uses as a both a spring and a piece of circuit board. And I'm going to just whilst putting a little bit of pull on the back here, uh, just apply the heat to the solder pad, and it, it will just pull out. You don't don't you don't need to force it. Just let it melt. Let it flow pull it away that's all there is to it and then that pulls out and you can discard that we're not going to use it again uh, now with the brown wire which is the the ground wire for the key uh, I'm just going to use a pair of tweezers and pull that through the body up so you, that just gives you more space uh, and what I'll do is solder the new connection to that and to the paddles. Right now, <clears throat> having removed the Molex thing, we need to find a 3.5 millimeter jack socket that fits the space. Now, this is a surface mount socket, uh, and it's it's a very very good fit. If you see, there's a slight recess where the Molex plug sat, where you can see the glue mark. And this, this is a very, very good footprint for footprint replacement. It fits in the same little gap. Um, the only thing is that these little feet... Oops. This stuff is quite small. Uh, these little feet, which fold out for the body, which, which are used to solder it down to a, a, a surface mount printed circuit board, um, they overhang the recess so I just fold them up out of the way so it pushes in and then solder wires to them now contrary to how it might look this main metal band around the socket is not the earth the screen that's actually the tip um, the earth is this orange one um, and this the red one goes to the the ring um so 
I'm I've I've bent these up as I've I've said slightly just to get them out of the way, and I've soldered wires red, black, and orange, but it's supposed to be the brown one, to that um, to replicate the wires that were originally on the the thing, the key. And now you can see that is a perfect fit in the footprint. Look at that. So that, that could be made for it. And in, in my opinion, it should have had that maybe in the first place. Um, but that's, that's a really nice fit. Uh, so all that's left to do is to feed these wires along their roots. And from that point of view, it's pretty much all there is to it. I'm just, I'm going to cut these to length and solder them back into their places. Um, I'll show you that. I will glue it in with epoxy. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, and then I have this, these little cowls. See that cowl? That goes around the nose of the plug, the socket, and sits into place in the key. So that gives it a bit of mechanical stability. It also covers up the work uh, and just gives a nice finishing touch. So that looks like a sort of a factory fit. Okay, so I've now cut these wires to length um, and I have uh, stripped and tinned the ends of the red and the black wire and soldered them to their pads on the the paddles. Uh, that, that's quite a straightforward job. Uh, I've also trimmed a little bit off the brown wire, uh, taken the orange uh, screen wire from the socket through the hole in the base, base of the paddle, uh, soldered it, its tag to the the brown ground wire uh, and then I've put on a, a dab of liquid insulation which just neatens it up, gives it a little bit more mechanical strength and uh, just prevents it from touching against anything which could set the key off. And uh, so you can see the installation on the back. All that remains is to glue that into place. The final stage. To glue this together um, I use epoxy, I use Araldite uh, standard. Um, it takes overnight to cure, um, 16 to 24 hours. Um, but that actually gives you a fair amount of thinking time. If you need to undo something, um, you can. Uh, and also, as a rule of thumb with epoxies, uh, the longer they take to cure, so the, the sort of traditional, more standard curing times uh, give you a stronger bond in the long run. So something that has a certain amount of mechanical stresses, which admittedly this really doesn't uh, benefit from the longer curing times. If you want to use Araldite Rapid or 5-minute epoxy, um, just be aware that you have a reduced working time with it and that it goes off very quickly, so um, a bit less thinking time. So that's the Araldite standard ready to go. And I, I apply it with a carved toothpick. So this is this is just a toothpick which has been carved to a bit of a chisel point to give you like a tiny spatula. Okay, you need to be careful not to get the adhesive into the plug mechanism itself because it'll it'll gum it up. It relies on being springy. So put some just into the bed of the recess where it'll sit nicely. I'm not actually going to over glue the socket itself. But, um, I just need enough to hold it firmly in place. So I'll put some there where that can just nestle down onto it, like a nest. Okay. Perfect. And then this little cowl, uh, which I designed specifically for this conversion, uh, and I 3D print them, uh, that gives it a little bit of sort of mechanical robustness. It prevents the, when you push the plug in for the socket from moving uh, and putting strain on the glue, which is holding it into place. Um, so I'm, this, this also glues in. So I shall apply some glue to where it's going to go, which is here into the back recess. And just gently work it all the way round 
the the hole being careful not to get any inside the socket yeah that would be a fairly bad thing so there that's nicely glued then you can see where this this goes down inside so i'm going to put some glue on these wing bits and on the bottom and then work that into place uh, so let's just work this into place so this that slits round the nose of the socket and just pushes back and down and into place keep any stickiness away if you can just with the glue just go around it filling in the gaps this sets transparent and sinks slightly so you don't really see the glue lines once you're done and you can always trim them with a really sharp knife when it's partly set so we just want it to be strong and just go around it almost like you know when you're grouting tiles if you've ever done any bathroom tiling or swimming pool tiling so we're just grouting this cowl with Haraldite. Oh, and just to say, you know how I said in one of the previous videos that it's always a good idea to test things before you fully reassemble them? Well, I, I have tested this. I know it works. Okay, so the final stage is to clamp it up, and I find these nylon blocks are ideal for this because they, they exert a nice even pressure and they don't... Um, they don't stick to the epoxy so they'll come off really easily tomorrow um, okay let's make sure it's evenly clamped uh, keep away from the button on the the palm um, all right this might be considered overkill but it gives a nice squeeze even pressure. It's easy to operate with one hand. Plus you can get it good and tight. So the glue's cured overnight and the par mini paddle conversion is basically complete. You can see it here, so um, that it's finished off quite nicely and looking good. Uh, it can then be reassembled just slip it into its case and have its base clipped back on and there's one final part of the conversion that i should point out um you see how this 3.5 millimeter socket now is quite close to the bottom of the case and if you use a conventional 3.5 millimeter jack plug like this one there isn't quite enough clearance it fouls against the bottom of the case so it, it doesn't clip right in and it doesn't push through uh, so when i do these conversions the cables that um, i supply as part of it are these with with slimline 3.5 millimeter plugs on one end and the conventional 3.5 millimeter plug on the other so you can see the difference the slim line is very much thinner although the prong itself is exactly the same but these fit perfectly into the converted paddle with plenty of clearance um, and that then pushes out so all that remains then is to test it so i've connected it to my kia um, using the cable so it's got the slimline plug there conventional plug on the other end uh, and let's see if it works I think that's a renowning yes so perfect good to go uh, so then that slides back into its case and you can withdraw the slimline 3.5 millimeter plug uh, 
that probably be a lot more robust than the old Molex connector. Um, and a lot of people think that should have had a 3.5mm plug on right from the beginning. Thank you.